Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the author of What is WebSphere and the Exam Scam series of certification guides. Also the webmaster of examscam.com and pulpjava.com. I'd really appreciate if you headed over to my website and uh, picked up a couple of copies of uh, my uh, latest works. I can also get them on Amazon, but uh, I'd appreciate if you buy off my website instead. Anyway, so uh, what I wanted to talk about was uh, actually creating some custom tags. I've got a little web page here that displays the output of a Java bean. It's basically a timer. And as you can see, it tells you how many milliseconds it's been since you first came to the site. Um, it's done through a JSP page. It's a fairly simple, straightforward JSP page. It uses a use bean tag and a couple of get property tags to get properties of this little timer object. Um, however, I'd actually like to package all this up into uh, a simple custom tag that I could add on to a variety of different JSP pages and use over and over again. And so the way you create custom tags is you just create a new t class. I'm going to create a new class called uh, the timer tag. I'm going to put in the package com.examscam.servlet.tags. And I'm going to extend the class. I'm going to make the super class a special class called tag support. And that's in the javax.servlet.jsp blah 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 package. Click finish and essentially code this particular class. Now this class um, actually has uh, it actually has uh, it, it extends a class that has a variety of different methods that are used for implementing a custom tag. Um, I'm going to override one of them. So source override implemented methods. And I'm going to override the do start tag. Notice there's like a do end tag and do after body and, and uh, what else have we got in there that's custom tag related. The one that I'm really interested in is the do start tag. So I'm going to override the do start tag that's defined in the, the parent class. And uh, I'm going to actually do a little bit of Java magic here and uh, throw in some of my own little code. Um, something that I've kind of pre-written. You don't want to see me typing everything out. So organize imports, make sure that all of my imports are added. But essentially what I've done is I've, I've added code to this do start tag method. And essentially when my custom tag is added to a page, what will happen is the first time the page sees this tag, it'll do the do start tag method. And you see inside of this custom tag, it's really a, a Java component, but it gives me access to all the important servlet API objects, like the servlet response, the servlet context, the HTTP session, the JSP writer. Um, I think I can even get the servlet config and all sorts of other objects in here out of this thing called the page context. It's a hugely important object when we're actually working with custom tags. Now what I'm actually doing inside of my custom tags, I'm just going to try and get my timer out of the session. If it's null, I'll create a new one. Once I get it, I'll print out the elapsed time and the start time to the user. I don't know. Do some lazy exception handling. And then return a special constant that's available in custom tags that says skip body. This is basically it. Anytime I'm, I'm going to create a custom tag, put it on a page. Anytime a client sees a custom tag, this code is going to execute. And you'll see that tag actually added to a page in just a moment. Now, once you've actually coded the Java for your custom tag, there's a couple of steps you have to take in order to get your custom tag to actually work. And one of them is to actually create a new tag lib def definition. I don't know what I did there. But under my web INF folder, I'm going to create a new, a new other. And it's just going to be a, a simple file. I don't know if they've got any wizards for this. And I'm just going to call it the exam scam taglib.tld. And you can see it right there. I know you couldn't see it before. Um, this is called the exam scam TLD. And this is going to include some, I don't know, code that describes a custom tag. Now, I never, I never write this by hand. I always write a taglib definition from existing taglib definitions. And actually, this time is going to be no different. I'm going to go into this particular piece of code and just paste my information in. Um, but you can see the important pieces of information here. They include um, well, just uh, the tag lib and the version that we're using. Uh, a little URI. That does actually doesn't have to be the web INF location, just a unique URI, a unique path um, that uniquely identifies your tag lib. A little info. And this is the important part for my little timer. Um, it's going to be called timer display when someone uses it on a page. Um, when, someone, when that appears on a page, I'm just going to link back to this particular class. It doesn't have a body. You can have real complex custom tags, even a little info on a tag.
tag as well. But that's my TLD. You need uh, a TLD um, for every tag library that you have. And the idea is you have multiple tags, so you can have an extensive tag library there. Um, the other thing you need, got a little cheat sheet here. The other thing you need if you're going to be using a tag library is you need to do a, a little addition to your web.xml file. Now I found actually I can get away without doing this from time to time. I'm not sure why. Um, but uh, anyways, I think it's one of the things you're supposed to do and uh, doing things properly is never really a bad idea. And essentially inside of the web.xml file, the deployment descriptor for the web module, um, you're supposed to add a little bit of information. A unique URI, that's this one here. Um, it's usually a domain name and the location of the tag library. And you can see that right there added in. I think it even gets, uh, geez, where is it? I think it gets thrown under references or something down here. Oh no, there it is, tag lib references um, under the variables tag. I could have actually added it in there using the wizard. Okay, so I've defined a, a class that implements uh, or that extends tag support and has my do start method. I've got a tag library right there that defines and describes my my custom tag. I've referenced in the web.xml of the web module that I'm going to be using the custom tag. The last thing I need to do is just actually go to a JSP and actually add it in. And you can see this JSP displays a timer using use bean tags and get property tags, which is very elegant. Um, however, I'm actually going to use the WSAD wizards to help me add a custom tag. And to do that, um, the first thing you do is, uh, what do you do? Well, I think you have to go to page properties you go to JSP tags and you add a tag lib directive. And specifically, I'm going to add a tag lib directive that says I want to use my exam scam tag library on this page, and the prefix will be exam scam. It all even says that there's one tag inside that tag library. So I add that to the page, and then anywhere on the page I can just use a tag library. So I'm going to say um, here's the output from tag library. And I just go insert, or sorry, JSP, insert custom. I only got one tag, so I'm going to insert that in. Actually, see the little icon there? Oh, I love that. There's a little bunch of little library books. Get it? Custom tag library. library books. Anyways, and that's my tag library added to the page. Now, it's all pure Java, even though we've got, you know, little kind of cute little icons here and something. It's all pure Java. Um, it's not nothing IBM specific here. Um, IBM just makes it incredibly easy to do it. Some clever sausages at IBM. Um, but you see, actually, that the wizards added this here, that tag lib definition. This is the prefix going to be exam scam. And you can also see here is a tag actually being used. You see the prefix exam scam and then the actual name of the tag, timer display, which is actually the name that we gave it inside of the TLD. So I'm going to do a control S on this particular file, get rid of the asterisks. Um, you know, you can always do a, a save all as well, which makes sure everything is saved. But I'm going to now run this JSP. So right click and say run, run on server, and just see what the output is. Just didn't mean to do that. And actually, you can see here, this is the output from use bean tags and JSP tags. Here's the output from the custom tags. And when you refresh, you notice that, well, I mean, the same stuff getting out because it's been designed that way. Um, however, the way it's actually implemented, one with use bean tags and the other with the timer, is very, very elegant. And I should probably even mention that that timer.java file. Let's give you a quick look at that. That actually resides in com.examscamcommon, but you see it's just a fairly simple timer. Anyways, that's the lowdown on how you can create tag libraries and uh, use tag libraries in your uh, web applications. Now, as I said, um, I do live off book sales. So you can pick up a copy of What is WebSphere, um, or even pick up a copy of one of my exam scam certification guides. It'd be really helpful. Also appreciate it if you uh, buy it off my website. Um, we always make sure that if you buy it from our website, we ship it out the, the next day, and we always try to have copies in stock for you. So that's the best way to do it. Alternatively, you can find it on examscam.com. Anyways, that's it for this tutorial. All I want to say now is uh, happy WebSphere.